Marcus Conti reporting. <laughs> what am I reporting on? Ah, the human condition. How the human condition can spin out of control sometimes. Looks like the lunatic left is really going off the rails here. Uh, I mean, it's 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 getting crazy, you know. They're, everybody's a bigot and a racist and a misogynist and a xenophobe and a xenophobe and a, a whoophobe and a pedophobe. <laughs> Everybody has a title. <laughs> or you're a white man. So you can only be... The white man is all those things. Like, you could be... You can't be any of those, only if you're a white man can you be those things. Am I right in saying that? Hmm. I think so. So, tell a little story. My, uh, yeah, we all come from different backgrounds, right? Some people watching, watching from England, you're watching from the fucking middle of the country somewhere, Missouri, or maybe California. You're down south, you're down in New, New Orleans, down in Florida. How about Texas? Texas, Oklahoma. Wherever you're watching, right, we all have different experiences, right? We all come to the table with something, you know, unique, right? Our, our perspectives are unique. <clears throat> we're not necessarily at the table, but we're, we're, we have a, 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 unique, a unique view of the world based on our experiences, based on our upbringings, based on our surroundings, right? So, you know, mine, the subject I want to talk about is uh, the lunatic left is off the rails in terms of the Apollo 11 <laughs> spacecraft. The, 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 you know, Apollo 11 going on the moon. They're saying that that's a, it's sexist and racist. <laughs> I'll talk about that in a second. But, again, my story is uh, I, I'm, I'm in New York City. I've been here my whole life, pretty much. And, and the, uh, the assault on white men, white men older white men right now in New York City is just is epic I mean the the city and you know this may sound degrading or, or denigrating but what the fuck I don't care uh, you can think of whatever you want but this is my observation and I've worked for the city of New York twice now once as an enforcement agent and got uh, got booted because I exposed the I exposed the corruption and the second time was in in a uh, in, in, in actually in a welfare system I worked as a caseworker in a welfare system and I could tell you that for the most part the city right now is like it's like that scene in uh, Star Wars you know the the airport scene where you got all the you got these weird kind of fucking people that they, you don't even see out in the, in the real world right they got fucking giant heads and giant bellies and they walk around like this and they're like they're like they're like fucking you know they're like uh, aliens Right? You don't see you don't see hipsters and young people and and um well to do well spoken. You see fucking freaks. <laughs> right? Now fuck you if you don't think so. You work for the city. Not all of it, but a lot of it. Not and certainly not like, you know, NYPD. They don't put that out. Any anywhere where you could where you're visually <laughs> where the public could see you, they don't they hide you. But not really. That that as well, right? So so you know, that's my experience of being a white male walking through that and being grossly discriminated against at every turn. So much so that I'm pretty much blackballed from city employment for speaking out about it. Now, I could file another 10 lawsuits. I have the evidence. And if anybody's interested in, you know, any lawyers interested in talking about that, I, I might be interested. But that's, that's not how you win the war. The way, the way you win the war is this way. You talk about it, you tell people about it, right? So that's my experience, that's who I am. And I know for a fact that, uh, oh, also, you know, ha having spent, I don't know, you know, the better part of my youth, from ages maybe 25 to 45, I spent it in downtown Manhattan in one of the most racially, you know, diverse areas in the world. And all my friends were all different colors, shapes, and sizes. Black, brown, yellow, pink, blue, peep, <laughs> whatever, man, right? What's up, doggy? And um, so, so, so my, the, my experience was, was that of, I had been, what I wanted to say about that is that I had been colorblind. I had been blind to the notion that 
at that time, this sort of racism, this sort of un unhinged assault on people for for their race, their white race, their white heritage, was not really the case. It was kind of like, I guess it was bubbling, but, but what happened was, the reason why I had to get away from it, I'll tell you why, because I, I found, I, well, I woke up one day, I looked up and I realized all, all the people that I know are fucking nuts. They're, they're stuck on this idea that, I remember the one instance that really, it really woke me up. I had this friend, and he's, he's a white male in the entertainment business, and he said, he said in a tweet or in a Facebook post or something, he said, I, have ne I will never know what it, was, it would be like to grow up black in America, having been so advantaged being white. I said, you're fucking crazy, you psychopath, right? What are you talking about? What the hell are you talking about? You know how fucking hard it is for all people? Forget about black, white. Right? So at that point, I started to realize that these people are fucking gone. And, and I left and never went back. You know, I never, I mean, I'm only, you know, half a mile away. But I, the point is, in New York, you can do that. You could be, you could be, you could go one block away and change your whole surroundings and nobody would even know, know you're there. Uh, that's kind of the way it is because it's a very, very dense population. So that, that's my experience with the unhinged left, for lack of a better term. Uh, now, in New York, it also has the unhinged right, that, that everybody of a different race and color is, is, is unworthy and, and should be, you know, put on a boat and sent back to wherever the hell they came from, right? Racist to the, to the, to the core. Uh, so that's not, I'm neither of those people. I, I mean, I, like I said, I've lived, I, I've lived around both. Probably the, the, the extreme right as a kid and then the extreme left as a young adult. So, you know, and, and I worked in, a, in, a, in an industry that was predominantly gay men in catering. Right? That's a lot of my experiences of being around very wealthy people is actually as a, in a catering industry as, a, as a, an events planner and such. So I know those people. Like I've actually sat down at the table. I've been in Mrs. Katz's house. The owner of Bear Stearns. I've been in her house. I know her. I, you know, I didn't look like I do now. I, I'm very, you know, I look like a, you know, like a, a borderline gay man. You know, handsome. I was handsome as a young man. Uh, get that out of the way, too. Anybody thinks so? Anybody wants to put up, I just think Sikanti's a fucking nerd. He never got any pussy when he's a kid. Let me tell you fucking something, man. I've gotten, I'll put my, I'll put my pussy count, right, up against anybody Anybody in in entertain in enter, in this kind of entertainment right now, I am the pussy master. I let me tell you, I'll put. I have a friend, right? Uh, he his his count is is unbelievable. We put him over five hundred women in his life. Wow, you know how fucking pussy that is. You know how many women that is? Five hundred women. I right, five hundred. Right, mine. I I don't. I'm not that high. I I would say. You know, all things considered, probably, I don't know, definitely more than 100. You know, not 500, but definitely maybe between 100 and 200 women in my life. That's college, that's as a young man, young, you know, kid, you know, 17, 18, pussy. Right? And what do I say that for? I, mean, I don't know. It's just it's just because it's just fun to talk about. <laughs> I'm just going to talk about your, you know, your sexual prowess. It makes you manly, right? See, I'm proud of that shit. I'm not a dog. I don't think of myself as a fucking male dog. Woof! <laughs> Pussy! No, I don't think of that at all. I just, I just say to myself that that, that, that was the, the, that's what I, I wanted at the time, and that's what I got. Because I, 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 I was able to, to move and shake. Ha-ha. <laughs> so, so, that's all fucking, oh my God, nine minutes in, I haven't even talked about the story yet. So here we go. So the liberals are attempting to strike the heart of American identity. It's not, it's not new. And here, um, so I'll read a couple of things from uh, some of the lunatic left media. This is the Washington Post reporting. <laughs> the culture that put men on the moon was intense, fun, family unfriendly, and mostly white and male. It's a Where's Waldo exercise 
to spot a woman or a person of color. Right? That's when you're watching the, the whole, you know, all of the footage of Apollo 11. With the man who went, the man that went to the moon. Right? It, now it's the white man that went to the moon. Because the blacks weren't interested. The blacks weren't included. The fucking, where's all the blacks? Where's all the brothers? That scene in um, <laughs> Summer of Sam. You remember fucking Spike Lee? I love that movie. Summer of Sam with Spike Lee. He's like, where's all... When, he, when, the, when the black guy walks into the Italian pizzeria and there's all the Italians on the wall, he goes... The guy turns around and goes, where's all the brothers? How come there's not a motherfucking brother on the wall, man? Where's the fucking brothers? Yeah, it's just funny, man. It's just funny. He's got like Al Pacino and John Travolta and... Yeah, Robert De Niro too. You know, still my hero, one of my heroes, at least in movies, in the movie sense. In real life, he's a piece of garbage now. Uh, so, uh, so that's that's the Washington Post reporting. New statesman: We choose to go to the moon, or at least some did. Watching all the Apollo 11 documentary film, it is impossible to not observe the nearly. That, that nearly every face you see is white and male. Right? Left, left wing rag. The, el, the, the new statement. <laughs> Statesman. This fucking... Well, I mean, who's writing this shit? Is it all black? I don't know. It's just funny to, to, to look. Here's another one. Uh, this is um, The Guardian. Good old boys from Nassau. Elderly white men. Every one of them who you suspect are still pinning for the days of American life when men were men and women waited by the phone in headscarves. <laughs> right? So you can't even enjoy the Apollo 11 anymore. Now you look at it and say, yeah, you're supposed to, the left is supposed to, you know, um, they want to rewrite history, right? To, 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 to invoke a certain... Um, you're supposed to feel guilty if you're white. You're guilty of being white, right? See, it's it's also very out of context, right? The look, America. Look at the founding fathers. There was a bunch of white guys that came over from England. What's so hard to understand, right? Yeah, equality and and all that stuff. But it takes time, right? You don't just advance the 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 dumbest of the dumb, the weakest of the weakest the oppressed and suddenly throw them into leadership roles and expect them to lead it doesn't work that way it doesn't it, it's it ha, competitive and competitive environment has to be a, a system of merit and I just showed you the example why the city agencies are shitholes because they operate on this notion of race and 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 you know it's my turn it's my turn right so, I just got self-conscious with all the dogs. Feel the dogs? People walk their dogs. So, what else? So, Buzz Aldrin, you know, Michael Collins, Neil Armstrong. They're racist, man. They're fucking... The guys are racist. The guys are racist astronauts, man. They got into... They got into astronautics. <laughs> astronauts. Astronautism. Because they're white and male, right? They're privileged. I don't know. It, it, it's just, it goes back to, you know, you have the, you know, the cunt video from yesterday where, where you've got, you've got women that, that attack maleness. Blacks atta attack whiteness. Right? And then, and then if the white should just peep for one second and say, hey, by the way, you guys are racist and discriminating. Right? What is discrimination? Discrimination is the, is the epitome of what I just read to you, right? Of separating people by race and color, or insinuating that that some people have a advantage as a result of their race or disadvantage. That's racism, at least in the classical sense. I don't think it means that anymore. Nobody knows what it means anymore. The courts are so fucked up. Nobody can. I don't think unless you're a, the you know the the old-fashioned black who was, you know, somebody tried to sneak a noose on his neck at the workplace who's sitting in his cubicle, and then somebody threw a noose around his neck. I said, hey, black, 
<laughs> you know, you wouldn't even know what racism is anymore because it's it's so it's so the lines are so gray. The, the, you know, nobody knows nobody knows where the line is anymore. You know, so so here's an interesting uh, line: picking people based on historic justice, skin color, chromosome combinations is a recipe for uncompetitive organization. The most talented never succeed. That's right. Uh, that's, that's, I think that's the essence of it, right? You know? And meanwhile, while we're talking about all this, Trump just put another 500 troops in Saudi Arabia to fight Iran and built up uh, uh, 2,100 2, troops on the southern border to fight off the, the immigrant Mexicans. Right? Military. Right? Instead of talking about de-escalating regime change and Venezuela is still a shithole the 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 I, I mean I don't talk about it much but the, the United States still has the sanctions still trying to sink Venezuela still trying to claim that it's their political I ideology of socialism that is causing the problem and not their extreme sanctions uh, that's what we should be talking about income and wealth and equality in America uh, and, but instead we're talking about we're talking about what color was the skin of the people that allegedly went to the moon. And I say allegedly, right? Because I know, I know, there's people watching this. You can say, Conti, we never even went to the moon. That shit was done in Hollywood, man. That was a fucking... That shit was done on uh, Colorado, man. That was the fucking desert. Can't you tell the desert? The, the flag, you remember the flag? The flag wasn't wagging because the flag had wrinkles. It was doing this, right? But uh, there's no wind on the moon. I, I know. Did we go to the moon? I don't know. Why do we fake it ten times, eight times, seven times? Man can't get out of the atmosphere, they tell us. It's impossible. The, the, the radiation belt, you'll melt. Humans will melt. It's never been done before. <laughs> That's the other side of the story. That's another story. That's a video for another day. So, Marcus Conti reporting on the human condition, and it ain't good. <laughs> That's fucking, right? You could, we could report on the little details, but this is, that is some human condition right there to say that the, that, you know, all the, all the time growing up and, and wanting to be an astronaut, aspiring to be an astronaut in the 60s, right? They went to the moon, they were heroes. Whether they did it or not, they were heroes. Buzz Aldrin's a hero, right? First giant step for man. One step for man. One giant step for humanity. Whoever he said. Uh, he's a hero, right? But now, now you're, you're, you're a racist. You're supposed to feel, you're supposed to feel some sort of shame, some sort of um, shame. Shame you. Shame you, white man. How shameful. And what is the result? And you have Trump, you know, doing a rally and people say, send them, send them back. About Ilan Omar, right? The fucking, from Somalia. Send them back. Where does it come from? It comes from the, the, but that, to say that, that's racist. See, the lunatic left will go crazy and say that's, that's racist. But to, to say that, Calling the astronauts, the, the great white fucking crusaders. <laughs> yeah, even got me saying it, white. The great astronauts of our time were, were, were just, just stupid whites, right? Because there was no blacks in the picture. That's not racist. But to say send her back to Somalia, where she probably belongs... <laughs> No, I like Ilhan Omar. I, I, I like I like the, her tenacity. I think she's misguided, but I like the fact that she speaks out, especially about the regime change wars. She she says a lot of good stuff. It's just they're just you know again they're colorblind. That's it's a problem. You know that's why you talk about it. They're a lot of them are colorblind. My man Bernie Sanders is colorblind. I still get the emails. I get the emails. He's supporting the you know the. the we need racial justice in this country. Bernie, wake the fuck up. You, you're going to lose it. 
I, and, and I'm not going to say if Bernie Sanders doesn't get the nomination, I'm not just going to say it was rigged. If it looks like it's rigged, if they clearly, if he's the front runner and it's rigged, then I'll say it. But if he's if he's the front runner and, and then he loses because of his own big fat fucking old ma- you know foot in his mouth, I'll say that too. I I don't think so. I think again, the the economic message of uh, that I've talked about all the time, economic you know uh, income and wealth inequality attack it, address it, or, you know, Medicare for all, take the big pharma out of the picture, deflate the the oil complex by moving towards alternative energies, military industrial complex, stop the regime change wars, get money out of politics. None of these things are on the table with the current administration, none of it. The idea that Trump is some magical, mystical, you know, being that's going to drain the deep state and somehow everything is going to fall in place is is really fiction and folly because it is it is what you're trying to attain is unattainable unless you address the problems, which the master of all things, Mr. Trump, doesn't doesn't do it. He's giving tax breaks to, to the billionaires and the and the corporations. He's empowering the very people that are holding you back. Now, you may think it's it's mil, it's you know it's it's intelligence run amok, CIA and spooks everywhere. Everybody's a spook. But that's not the problem. The problem is it, again is an economic problem. There is deep corruption. There's no doubt about that. But just to replace the corruption without addressing the people that are funding it, the corporations, you don't have much. So, so that's all I want to say. So, Mark Conti reporting on this uh, day of human condition evaluation. Jeff, Jeffrey Epstein, Epstein in jail, no bail. That's a good thing. We'll talk more about that. I'm a little exhausted talking about it. There's no new details on the table right now. It's just it's just um, he's being held, and that's good. Now he's now they got him in the little room, and 90 percent of the time they can get the truth out of him. They can find out what was really going on. If he wants to get out, he's going to have to talk. He's going to have to tell people. He's going to have to tell tell the whole story. Or well, he ain't getting out. They'll they'll hit him with 45 years if he plays hardball. If he goes to trial, which I don't think it's not going to happen. <laughs> Sorry. Conti makes a prediction: there will be no trial. I, I just don't see a billionaire like that rolling the dice on something like that. They already got the evidence. They're going to try to beat it on a technicality that that uh, that he's not uh, chargeable because he had some kind of deal. Uh, it already it's already showing you that these judges in New York are not. They, they, they want him. It's a, he's the, he's the, you know, the golden mumu. They got him, and they wanna, they wanna, wanna ring him out, and see what they, what he knows, right? Make an example out of him. For political purposes, yeah, of course. We don't know. I mean, Trump's doing a good job pushing back. They're trying to pin it on Trump, like they do everything else. Right? The lunatic left. Right? We're so pure. We're so, we're so for everybody. It's such a fucking lie. It's become a, it's become a pathetic, ugly fib. Right? You look at it and you say, how stupid are you? You actually believe that? Don't you get it? Don't you see it? Be proud of you, who you are, your whiteness, your blackness, your, your gayness, your colorness, whatever. Be proud. Right? Why do you have to bash other people? Or more so, why do you have to bash the history of America? you know, championing, tear down the monuments, tear down history. They tried that here. They were going to tear down fucking Christopher Columbus and Columbus Circle uptown, right? They were going to take down the monument. They did it in my neighborhood. They saw it off the, at the Church of the Generals. They saw it off uh, Stonewall Jackson and General Lee's plaque. They wanted to knock his house down in Fort Hamilton right here. Uh, That is insane. Embrace history. In all, it's in all. Christopher Columbus is not a racist. 
How do you know? It was fucking 600 years ago. Nobody knows. It's out of context, right? You're trying to you're trying to uh, evaluate history on current context when everything is always changing. Right? I wish they would teach meditation in in schools. I wish I wish that 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 young people were required to meditate for 20 minutes a day in school where you not only just quiet but actually give the instruction and let people let the young people realize how powerful the mind is that there is there is this quiet place and then there's there's all this noise going on but one can can retreat to a quiet place and make up one's own mind and find one's truth that's what I do I mean I look around and I listen to everybody but essentially you have to be you have to you have to be alone you have to be alone with your thoughts All right? and I wish that, that that they would teach that to kids in school it's not hard to do it's rather simple I could teach it to you right now sit quietly with legs legs crossed and follow your close your eyes and follow your breath and know that you're breathing in and know that you're breathing out and when a thought arises return to the breath thinking label it thinking that's all it is I'm alive I'm breathing and stay there and that's the highest instruction the Buddha gave that's it that's mindfulness now what you discover doing that over time is another story and that's for you to figure it out Marcus Conti reporting